Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about why you should migrate in Australia. Well, majority are focused on migrating to well-known countries, but opportunities are not just in USA, Europe, Middle East, and Canada. We are just basically in the down under. I'll discuss more of these benefits after the intro. Hi guys, I'm Jackie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Before we get started, Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell button to get an update with new videos uploaded in my channel. And please like, comment, and share. Thank you for staying back. In here, I will discuss my top 5 benefits. They are... Medicare, high living standards, low crime rate, education system, and hex help. As I have said, Australia is just down under, and if you look at it, it will be down under the global map. Almost as big as the USA in size, it is peaceful and wealthy country. So let's begin, shall we? Australia's healthcare system is one of the many pros for choosing Australia as your place of residence as there is a universal healthcare. In addition, it has highly trained and regulated healthcare providers ranking it among the best in the world when it comes to the healthcare services. The healthcare system is funded through the Medicare program. The Medicare program covers all Australian citizens and permanent residents. So what does this mean? It means that if you are an Aussie or PR, then if you get sick, you'll have free or lower costs for medical services provided by your doctors, specialists, or healthcare professionals. So for example, for me, if I want to have a free checkup with a GP, I always make sure that it is bulk bill. Take note of that, bulk bill. That means that I won't have to pay for anything like consultation with the GP. Now, Medicare covers the cost of treatments in public hospitals and subsidizes costs of a wide range health services and medications. Unfortunately, it doesn't cover for ambulance services. So if you use this type of service, you have to make sure that it is covered by your private health care health insurance. Additionally, Medicare provides them with um, you know, affordable services and extra coverage for special groups like veterans. They are those people who served during the war and was a member of the Defense Forces. Usually, they have this DBA card and they got lots of entitlement. Now, we will go to number two. tax is allocated in the Medicare. However, there is this Medicare levy surcharge where you get an additional tax if you earn a certain income threshold. So in this box, you see the threshold and the rates for 2023 to 2024. If you are a single or a member of a family unit, then if your combined income is in the base tier 1, tire 0, tire 2, tire 3, then below that you'll see how many percent you will get um, charge of. Alright, so the surcharge aims to encourage individuals to take out private hospital cover and where possible to use the private system in order to reduce the burden in the public Medicare system. This is enforced on people age 30 and if they did not take a private insurance after 31 and decided to take it in the later life, then they might risk getting 2% lifetime health cover loading added to their premium. Yep. Even if I have a Medicare benefit, I still opted to have a private insurance because of, you know, some benefits such as extras, dental, um, checkups, or procedures, eyeglasses, um, reproductive health services, um, private hospital admissions with out-of-pocket 
you know, annual fees and also the right to choose my own doctor. Take note guys that the setup in the public system or for example if you get a meeting in a hospital that is a public, they are in um you know, people are sharing rooms with about two to four people. So if you get a meeting in a public hospital and you have a private insurance, you cannot play that card. Unless you have a very contagious disease that they have no option but to isolate you in another room. You do, however, as a private patient in a public hospital, have the option to choose your own doctor. Before we practice this scenario, I have a good news for some of you. Those who does not have a Medicare benefit does not need to pay a Medicare levy or the surcharge that I am talking about. Simple logic is that if you don't have this benefit, then why would you pay for it? Hence, um, this is an extra 2% savings for um, international students, holiday makers, and people who are in working visa. Now, let's go back to practice. Now, in this scenario, for example, if you are someone who's earning $110,000 and you are single, so you're going to be in tier 2, now, your Medicare levy surcharge will be 1.25%, which is an equivalent of $1,375. Now, for example, for me, I am paying high, like $203 per month because it comes with an extra cover, which is what I'm after for, like, um, extra, like optical and dental benefits. Now, if you look at it, there's going to be about $1,100 difference, like I'm paying extra. However, when I'm using my extras coverage, it's kind of equivalent, equates this as well. So, with optical, I have $250 um, benefit on that, and I usually go to spec savers every year. I get a buy one, take one on the branded products. And then for dental cleaning, I do that every two, uh, like twice a year. And it's about $300 per procedure. Now, I also had recently done a major dental procedure such as root canal and <clears throat> crown placement. And that's usually around three thousand to six thousand dollar as well. Now my uh, private insurance cover about seventy percent, or it's capped at a certain price, and I have to pay um an, a certain amount for it. But if you're gonna look at it, two hundred fifty dollar plus three hundred is five hundred fifty, and probably about one five to two thousand on major data procedure, and that's almost like. A win for me for taking a private insurance and also gives me an assurance that for example if uh, in an emergency something happens to me I'll have the option to go to a private hospital rather than going to the public hospital not that I'm against in a public hospital I did work and I currently work in a public hospital anyway but I know how the system works and uh, um, for me to have a bit of peace of mind and a bit of you know uh, privacy I would rather go to a private hospital but it's up to everyone out here um, yeah it's just giving me an assurance that even if something happened to me for example in the road I can be assured that I'm not gonna be paying for any ambulance fee which I just discussed before so it depends on every people. Some people doesn't have a private insurance even if they're beyond 31 because they think that they don't need it. And they're healthy people. So now let's go to my next benefit that I think is good. Now the Australian economy is highly developed thus making it an excellent place to live and work. Employees are paid um, very high salaries, ensuring that they live a quality and comfortable life. The high living standard may be attributed on a high average wages and excellent government systems and low crime rate. Now, the current 
exchange rate for AUDT US dollar is 0.67 as of April 2023. Now, I have also discussed in my previous videos about work entitlements in Australia, and the link is going to be about um, about it. So it's going to be on the link above. Also, if you are a nurse like me, you may also want to check those videos that I made, especially the solar part, which is quite exciting. Low crime rate. This is definitely number three reason why you should move here. Now, Australia is ranked as 27 in the whole world as a safe country in the year 2023, which is the year today. And the 10 safest city in the world as Sydney on uh, top five and Melbourne on top 10. So those are the cities that you probably want to move in the future. Or is education system in Australia is of high quality. It is also regarded as one of the best for domestic and international students. Its key features include qualified trainers, a comprehensive curriculum, and a high quality education delivery. In addition, citizens and permanent residents can access free education from a government school. Australia has seven of the top universities in the world, which is what you see right now. Um, Australian National, National University, which is in Canberra, University of Melbourne, University of Sydney, University of New South Wales, which is also in Sydney, University of Queensland, Monash University, and University of Western Australia, which is in Perth. So, um, the government also... To set aside, sorry, um, approximately two hundred million from the budget for um, scholarship for local and international students. So if you are looking for a scholarship, then you might try and reach out to the administration so like you could be guided properly in how to do that application. Also, I just noticed that the tuition fee for domestic and international students are significantly higher maybe around three to four times different so don't be shocked about it um also when i did my post grad in a university i only paid two digits per semester as the university and my workplace have certain partnership or arrangement so maybe try and also look into like for example some of your workplace would also offer that one like a scholarship for a certain you know upgrading yourself which is really good because you get an education allowance and education um, time off like a time off the clinical time so maybe try and explore that as well and yep i was able to do study whilst working full-time because it's really doable and i finished my postgraduate diploma last 2019 and it's actually uh, beneficial for me especially for me as an oncology nurse because it gives me a bit more familiar familiarization with my practice and also give me a bit of an education allowance i think about maybe well, i'll just have to check a base deep. but all in all it's like four thousand dollars a year four thousand four thousand to five thousand a year which is going to be a lifetime benefit if you're working on a certain sector right not all like for example if you did a master's on a certain subject or something, and then you work in a different sector, then you might not get the um, education allowance. As a student myself before, um, my advice for you guys is do a time management, do no cram, space out your studies, maybe make 100 to 200 words per day and set up a schedule, divide it up. Also, focus on the content. Make sure to answer what is being asked for or else you are making an essay that has less marking value. Hex Help. This is a loan scheme to assist eligible supported students pay their contribution through a loan or upfront discounts. Students can afford to get a higher education through this program. 
Paying their fees are deferred until the student could afford to pay it back. There are eligibility criteria such as being an Aussie, a New Zealander on a long-term residency, by the way. There's a new rule also coming soon stating that New Zealand citizens who has been living here for long can directly apply to citizenship rather than going through the PR hopes and other else. Well, just look it up. I guess I think of this a benefit as well because it would be costly for parents to shoulder university fees plus worth considering that parents may be already at a retiring age when their kids step into higher education stage um, for example for me i'm already 30 plus without kids yet so if i were to have a child at 40s then that would be a problem for me in the future i guess that this encourage as well people to become responsible of their own education for example in the philippines it is deemed that parents pay for the education of their children so when i finish my college without the need to work a hard um it's hard for me to study full-time with about eight to ten subjects and work at the same time so i never worked by the way in my college well thank you for my parents so that's why i'm grateful to them but the thought of having a free sponsored education for me is a privilege and I was lucky I uh, found my, pa fa my passion ASAP and stuck on the course that I chose which is nursing. But how about those people of same scenario but change to different courses because they think the course that they were studying at the time is not what they are aiming for or they see themselves in the future. So they keep on changing their courses but for these people, they can afford to do that. But how about those people who can't? So Hexel, um, I think, helps people become responsible of their education. And some people might think it's not a benefit because you have a loan that you need to pay after working. But hey, still a benefit. Just for our summary, the top five that I have discussed are Medicare, high living standards, low crime rate, education system, hex help. Now I know some may still not be in your list, but hey, rankings are subjective and that's how I ranked it. Although please stay tuned as I will discuss rest of top 10 in my next video. So please watch the part two. Have a good day. Here is the snippet of part two. The link will be provided if you want to jump onto the topic. Just look at the top. See you in the next video.